Hi there, uh, my name is Kelly Anderson, and I'm here to share my story with you. My story, much like Miss T New Jersey, is a little bit different than the typical scoliosis story, but maybe you'll be able to take something out of it. So I decided to use a mountain for the theme, which talking to somebody else who's going to present after me, turns out she used a mountain too, because we both saw scoliosis the exact same way. Scoliosis is a challenge that you have to climb over, and when you finally do, the view is so much sweeter. It's so much higher up than it is for a lot of people, um, and so you should feel lucky. So like many of you, uh, I was a pretty rambunctious kid. I was always jumping off of stuff and chasing my sister around the house. We had a lot of pets. So I was a pretty active kid, and for 12 years of my life, I didn't know what scoliosis was or that I could even have it. But then in seventh grade, we had these random screenings in our gym class where they were checking us for this thing called scoliosis. And when they explained what it was, I didn't think that I could have it because I was a really committed dancer. I thought that with my perfect posture, there was no way that there could be something wrong with my back. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> you can see that there was something very wrong with my back. And um, once you see it, you can't unsee it. It pops out of every single picture and it, it changes you. There's, this is one of the few surviving pictures of my scoliosis because whenever there was a picture where you could see where one of my hips jutted out or my back was more prominent, I would make my mom delete it or throw it away. I, I wanted to hide that shame. It was shameful to me. Wait, no, go back. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, Eventually, we started trying to find treatment for it, and I refused the surgery for a long time. Uh, to me, getting surgery meant giving up dancing, and I wasn't ready to do that. I wanted to go to school for dancing. I didn't want to do something that was so permanent. I didn't want to put metal in my body. I didn't want a big, ugly scar. It all sounded so scary to me. I didn't have this resource. I didn't have somebody to ask what it was going to be like. So uh, we sought out alternative treatments. We started going to a chiropractor, um, which didn't work, so don't do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, a little cynical, I can't help it. <laughs> uh, eventually, my mom did the research, and we ended up here at this fabulous place, the Shriners Hospital. Um, again, I was in seventh grade, and we, I actually started out with a different physician, Dr. Betts, who's not here today. And um, he told me, well, you know, your scoliosis isn't getting that much worse yet. We can wait. You can hold off on the surgery. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to wait. I'm going to keep dancing. Uh, meanwhile, something else was going on. Um, I was diagnosed in high school with pectus excavatum, which is another skeletal deformity that affects your sternum. It pushes in on your um, lungs and your heart, and it makes it really hard to breathe. And I've learned that pectus excavatum often goes hand in hand with scoliosis. So if you have pectus excavatum, it's very likely that you'll also have scoliosis. So it was no wonder that I wasn't keeping up as well as I should in my dance classes. It was really hard to breathe. I wasn't as bendy as the other girls. And on top of that, now that I had seen all these things and I knew that they were medical problems, I hated my body. I felt like a freak. I would call myself Quasimoda, <laughs> um, which is not a very nice thing, so don't call yourself that. Um, but anyway, I knew that dancing wasn't in the cards, and I had to decide what my future was going to look like. Was I going to get married? Would I be able to find a boyfriend? Um, so eventually we decided to commit to surgery. We started out with a pectus excavatum surgery, and we decided to hold off on scoliosis surgery. So meanwhile, I decided to go to Arizona State and work on my tan. <laughs> it worked. There's a lot of sun there. That's a good thing. Um, <laughs> and then life happened again. So I debate about whether or not I would share this part of the story, but I think it's important to address the fact that just because you have scoliosis going on in your life doesn't mean that there aren't other things going on too. Um, when I was 18, I went home from winter break and I was in a really nasty car accident and I broke both of my feet, my arm, and I fractured my spine in two places. So now not only do I have this whole new package of problems, but we didn't know if I was going to be able to get this surgery that was scheduled for the summer after my freshman year of college. But life went on. Uh, a month after being in the hospital, I was back on crutches. And then a month after that, I took those crutches back to school and I was back in action. I got the best grades that I've ever gotten in my life, just under a 4.0. 
then it was time to straighten out. Finally, we decided that we were going to do the surgery. So in July, uh, June of 2011, we came here and the surgery went perfectly. It went faster than we had expected. Dr. Cahill, who is in the audience, was smiling so big because the surgery had gone faster and I was an inch taller. I was actually going from 5'4 to 5'5. So that was really exciting news. Uh, I'm not, never going to forget that moment that I got up and I walked to the bathroom and I looked in the mirror and I could see that my hips were even and my spine was straight. I had a big scar, but whatever, I, my hips were even. <laughs> Um, by now, my body was full of metal in both of my feet, my arm, my back, my rib cage. But you know what? I was fine in three weeks. And then three months after that, I was back at school. And I finished out my college career confident and accomplished. I had a lot of girlfriends. I got that tan that I went to school for. Though I didn't get very good at cooking chicken wings. I tried. Uh, I was the class speaker for my graduating class. I graduated magna cum laude, and I got to anchor the newscast um, for my college show, which led me to the next phase of my career. For the next two, three years of my life, I got to work in LA as a red carpet reporter, and I got to meet a lot of really good looking people. Uh, Jared Leto, Kate Blanchett, 50 Cent, Brad Pitt. Um, but the big, biggest success here wasn't this turn in my career. It was that I was able to go to work and not think about what I was going to wear. I didn't have to worry about wearing baggy clothes. My biggest concern was going to work and making sure that I was doing the best job that I could possibly do. I could just have a conversation with somebody and report as effectively as I wanted to, and clothes weren't a problem. Making Jared Leto my boyfriend was a problem, but still working on that one. Eventually, I moved to Oregon to continue working on my journalism skills. Um, I now work as a TV news reporter and anchor. I have a lot of girlfriends um, who I love very much. And uh, I had my first long-term boyfriend, so boyfriends weren't a problem anymore. <laughs> um, and I actually got to report on President Obama coming to our local airport, and I got through the metal detectors just fine. So it's good news. <laughs> I won't lie to you, I'm not much of a dancer anymore, but I have found some other hobbies, skiing, surfing, horseback riding, skiing and falling, <laughs> um, but I still stay really active and I'm really happy with the life that I've shaped for myself. Scoliosis doesn't shape me anymore, I shape it. I'm sharing my story with you to show you that just because you have a condition that makes you different, you don't have to be alone. You're going to climb a mountain that's so much higher and the view is going to be so much sweeter. You're going to find new ways to make yourself happy and you're going to find the look that makes you comfortable. You're going to find the people that love you so much that it's going to fill all those dark spaces in your mind and you're going to breathe better and you won't be in any pain. If you haven't gotten the surgery yet, don't be scared. You're in the right place. These are the experts. They know what they're doing. They know what they're talking about. There's nothing to fear. I mean, if you're holding back because of the unknown, just know that the unknown is better. It, it gets so much better. So stand up straight, write the story the way you want it to, and love every twist and turn. <laughs>